Hi everyone, hope you all are doing good. Today I am back with another new topic that is delay cells. In this video I am going to discuss about what are delay cells, why do we use them and also what are the structural pattern that are used in the libraries. If you haven't yet watched my previous videos on static timing analysis, you can click here on this link above. Also, I'll share the link on the description box. So without any further delay, let's get started. Delay cells are used to control delays in a signal path. These delay cells are used to fix hold violations in the design. So we start fixing hold violations CTS stage onwards, right? So these delay cells are required to fix high when high hold violations are there high number of hold violations are there in the design that time we use these delay cells so these delay cells have same functionality as that of buffers but with larger delay larger area and high power so these delay cells are used to fix larger magnitude of hold violations and these delay cells would consume near very less area or power Otherwise, we need to use huge number of buffers which will further create congestion in the design. Because we know that uh, to fix smaller magnitude of hold violations, especially to fix the transition time, we use low drive strength buffers, right? Otherwise, it will create congestion in the design. There are certain specific structural pattern uh, or you can say the architecture of delay cell that are used in the design but it can vary based on the design requirements and technology based that means it can vary from library to library but here we are going to speak about few possible few common structural patterns that are commonly used in the libraries first is buffer 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 chain second inverted inverter chain and last but not the least big buffer with huge RC values First, we will see buffer 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 chain. This is a common approach where a set of buffers stages are connected in a series to create a delay chain. And each buffer stage introduces a small delay and the cumulative delay can be adjusted by the number of buffers that are required in the chain. So based on the uh, what kind of uh, how much delay there are. So based on that we adjust this number of buffers. And this method is very simple and effective for creating control delays. So this method basically we use whenever uh, less number of less magnitude of hold violations are there. That time only we go for this kind of delay cells. Next is inverter inverter chain. So this approach involves using inverters in a chain. So in this case, the delay is introduced by the propagation delay of the inverters. So using two inverters in series can create a delay element and the cumulative delay can be adjusted by the number of inverters in the chain. So as we know, inverters means instead of buffer, if we use inverters, these are much beneficial as we already know. I won't discuss that here. I'll create another separate video for that. But inverters means it will basically save the area as well as the transition time, the uh, pulse width violations won't happen if we are using inverters. So that's why this is another much beneficial uh, pattern to use rather than buffer 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 chain as a uh, delay cell. Last one is big buffer with huge RC values. So a delay cell could be implemented using a larger buffer with a significant, significant parasitic RC time constant. So RC means resistance capacitance. So the RC time constant determines the rate at which the voltage across the capacitor changes, affecting the delay introduced by the buffer. So this approach might be used for larger delays where precise control is required. So as we know that RC time constant means it represented as R into uh, capacitance that is internal capacitance of a cell plus the load capacitance. Internal capacitance means the drain to source capacitance. So drain to source capacitance means if we have uh, more drain to source capacitance that means if we have more internal capacitance that uh, that means if the drive strength is more when the transistor width is more that means the drive strength of a cell is more that means automatically the drain to source capacitance or what we call as internal capacitance will increase 
and as internal capacitance increases means resistance will reduce by half like if it, if we are going for let's say double strength uh, double drive strength so our resistance will reduce by half and our internal capacitance will become twice so this choice between these methods that i have just now explained the structural methods so the choice between these methods depends on the specific requirements of the design including the desired delay resolution power consumption area constraints and the technology used in the fabrication of the digital circuit that's all about it if you have liked the information on this video please do hit like on this video and if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel please do hit subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon as whenever i am uploading a new video you will get notified immediately and also comment down below your feedback and don't forget to share with your friends colleagues and wireless aspirants thanks for watching this video